200. 200 is the gold standard. This is what you want to see every single time. Your GET request has been fulfilled, and the server is returning the requested data. 200 is the most common success code you'll see in API responses and web browsing. Think of it like ordering a pizza. You ask for pepperoni, extra cheese, and it shows up exactly like that, hot and perfect. In the dev world, this happens when you fetch a user profile and get back clean JSON with their name, email, and avatar. When you see it, grab that data, render it in your UI, and keep moving. But 200 isn't the only success code. Sometimes the server has more to tell you. 201. 201 means you didn't just succeed. You created something new. This code is typically returned after a successful post request. A 201 confirms that your request didn't just succeed, but it successfully resulted in a new resource being created on the server. Usually happens when new user accounts, new database entries, or new forum posts have been created. Here's the cool part. The server usually sends back a location header with the exact address of what you just created. So when you see 201, check that header. That's your direct link to the brand new resource you just made, 204. 204 is success with a twist. There's no response body. The server completed your task. Maybe you deleted a user, updated a record, or modified a setting. But there's nothing to send back. A 204 means the server has successfully completed the task, often a delete, patch, or put operation. And confirmation of that success is all you need. No data needs to be sent back to the client. Now that we have seen what some of the success HTTP status codes look like, let's see the 300 series of the HTTP status code, 301. When you see a 301 status code, it means one thing. This resource has permanently moved. Update your bookmarks. The browser is automatically redirected to the new URL. This code is vital for SEO. By using a 301, the old URL's search engine ranking power is passed to the new URL. It's the digital equivalent of submitting a permanent change of address form to the post office. If you're moving pages, make sure you use that 301 to preserve your site's authority. 302. The 302 is a temporary redirect. Unlike a 301, the move is short-term and the original URL will be back. The server is saying, I'm making a temporary detour. The content is over here right now, but please keep using my original URL for all future requests. This often happens during server maintenance or A-B testing. For developers, the difference is crucial. A 302 tells search engines not to update their records or pass along SEO value. 304. The 304 aka not modified is a silent success story behind the scenes. When your browser visits a page, it can ask the server, hey, has this file changed since the last time I downloaded it? If the content hasn't changed, the server replies with a 304. It says, nope, the resource is not modified. Just use the version you already have stored in your cache. No new data is sent. This drastically speeds up page loading and saves bandwidth for both you and the server. Now, we hit the 400 series or the client error codes. 400. 400 or bad request tells you the server understood your request, but it's not going to process it because your request itself was malformed or invalid. Think of it like trying to order a coffee, but instead of saying latte, you just yell liquid hot refresh things. The barista understands you want a drink, but not what kind. This usually happens because of things like bad syntax in your URL, missing information in an online form, or maybe even an outdated cookie messing things up. So next time you see that 400, remember, it's time to check your end, your URL, your inputs, or even clear those cookies. 401. The 401 is the unauthorized indication status code. When you hit a 401, the server is telling you, I know who you're trying to be, but you haven't given me proper credentials to prove it. It means the resource you requested requires authentication, and the credentials you provided, or maybe didn't provide, are missing or invalid. Don't confuse this with the 403 forbidden. A 401 is all about identity. Did you log in? Is your session token expired? Is your username or password wrong? Fix your credentials and you're usually good to go. 403. The 403 refers to forbidden error code. This is one of the most misunderstood status codes. 
let's see what it truly means. When you get a 403, the server says, I know who you are, but you are absolutely not allowed to access this. This is the key difference from a 401 unauthorized. Think of it this way. A 401 means show me your ID. A 403 means your ID is valid, but you don't have the key to this room. You're authenticated, but you lack the necessary permissions or roles for that specific resource. 404. This is the most famous error of them all. The 404 not found. Everyone knows this one. This error is simple. The server checked its entire directory and came up empty. It means what you're looking for does not exist on this server. A 404 can happen for a few reasons. Maybe the page was deleted, the website was restructured, or, most commonly, you just have a simple typo in the URL, or the link you clicked was broken. If you see a 404, the first thing to check is that web address. 405, the 405 refers to method not allowed. This error is for the developers out there, primarily dealing with API. The 405 means the resource you requested exists, but the HTTP method you tried to use on it is invalid. For example, you might be trying to create a new item using a POST request, but that specific endpoint only allows you to view items using a GET request. If you get a 405, check your API documentation and make sure you're using the correct method for the job. 429. 429 means too many requests. This is the server's way of telling you to slow down. You've hit the rate limit. Servers do this to stop spam and keep things fair for everyone. If you keep refreshing a page too fast or make too many API calls, you'll get hit with a 429. It's not an error, it's just a pause. The server might even send a retry after message, telling you how long to wait before trying again. Finally, we've reached the 500 series. These codes mean the problem isn't with you. It's on the server's side. Let's see some that you will encounter most of the time. 500. 500 is the catch-all error. I mean, it's the server's way of saying something unexpected broke, and I don't know how to describe it better. This often happens due to unhandled exceptions, a database connection failure, or even a misconfigured server setting. Imagine walking into a store ready to check out, but the cashier's register suddenly crashes. They want to help you, but first they need to fix their system. That's exactly what a 500 feels like. 502. A 502 error means a middleman server got a bad response from another server it relies on. This happens constantly in load balancers and microservice architectures, where servers form a chain. Your request hits server A, which asks server B for help. But server B is having a meltdown. One server in the chain dropped the ball, and the middleman had to break the bad news to you. 503. A 503 error means the server is temporarily unavailable, either overwhelmed or under maintenance. The server's alive and gets your request, but it's maxed out. Maybe it's drowning in traffic, or the team took it offline for updates. Often, you'll see a retry after header with an exact comeback time. The server's literally telling you when to try again.